Lent is a journey with Jesus to the cross. And like any journey, there are different ways of embarking on it. One thing every journey has in common is this. You can only start from where you are. So where is this? Up on Hatherley Moor, by the monument to Captain, later Colonel William Morris, a local man who was ordered to lead the 17th Lancers in the first line of the charge of the Light Brigade. It was a disastrous event on the 25th of October 1854 during the Battle of Balaclava in the Crimean War. Through miscommunication and incompetence by the top brass, the cavalry was sent on a doomed charge straight into the enemy guns. William Morris fully expected to die, but still he went. His horse was killed, he was badly wounded, but he managed to catch a loose horse in the chaos and began to ride back until that horse too was killed. Weak and barely conscious by then, he was rescued by two men, Surgeon James Moat and Sergeant Charles Wooden. They were both in mortal danger but succeeded in their rescue mission and they both received the Victoria Cross Although Moot had to campaign for Wooden to be given one too, as initially only the man of higher rank was awarded it. Well, William Morris survived. He was nursed back to health by none other than Florence Nightingale herself. And he's remembered here in Hatherley by this monument. And what a view it commands. Over the next few weeks, we will be thinking about different aspects of the Christian journey, taking in various local landmarks as we go. There is an African proverb which says, a man does not know where he is from, may never know where he is going. Another phrase that springs to mind is from The Sound of Music. Start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. We need to ask ourselves, who am I? Where am I? Where am I going? So let's pause for a moment and pray the words of King David found in Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. For you have created my inmost being. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Mm -hmm. 
Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 13, the calling of Matthew. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but those who are ill. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. There is a no-nonsense simplicity to this account of Matthew's call to discipleship. There he is, going about his usual daily routine, and then Jesus turns up and his life is never the same again. Matthew begins a journey he could never have imagined for himself. Matthew had taken employment from an oppressive, occupying regime. The consequences of that meant a rift between him, his family and his community. Matthew is also known as Levi, which is the name of the priestly tribe of Israel. Was that his ancestry? Was he a descendant of the ones tasked with guiding the people to God through worship and scriptures? We cannot be sure, but Matthew must have carried shame and regret as he took money from his neighbours in order to finance the empire that dominated them. He had betrayed his people by swearing an oath of allegiance to Caesar. Why would he get up and go so immediately if he was not already hungry for a different way of life? He responded to the call from this strange rabbi without question, not knowing where he would be led. And where does Jesus take him? Back to his house. And not only that, Matthew invited everyone he knew to come and meet Jesus. The house was full of outcasts. For where do outcasts socialise? Well, with fellow outcasts, of course. What if you were a guest at Matthew's house that night? A few hours would have passed as Matthew put the word out and organised the food and the wine. It must have been a large house to fit so many people in, or at least one with a courtyard. The thing with outdoor dining is that the neighbours can hear. The house would have been in the more affluent end of town. Why be a tax collector if it weren't for the money? considering what you gave up along the way. Taking his first steps with Jesus, Matthew extended hospitality to his friends. Others who had lost their way in life would be introduced to Jesus. Matthew did not know 
what the future would hold. All he knew was that he was walking into it with Jesus. I imagine Matthew looking at his house, at his possessions, all the trappings of his old life, and then looking at Jesus. Here were the plush fabrics that his family refused to sit on. The Roman glass goblet his old rabbi refused to drink from. The material trophies of financial prosperity had lost their appeal. He was poor in spirit and he knew it. His life had become a shadow of what his parents had wanted for him. He had always been an intelligent pupil at the synagogue. He could have trained to be a rabbi himself or at least a scribe. However, he wanted a quicker, less arduous way of gaining status and he wanted to show everyone he could have some power and wealth. He turned his head back on his heritage. He turned his back on God. And this amazing day, God found him, interrupted his daily work and turned his life upside down, or better to say, turned it the right way up. Incredulous at the decision he had made and yet at peace. Matthew, whose life had been governed by order, bureaucracy, keeping the right side of the bad guys, had suddenly faced a leap into the unknown and he took it. In the light of the love and mercy of Jesus, he faced the truth of what he had become. He was restored to the heritage of who he truly was, a Levite, a leader of people to God. He was ready to venture out to a big, wide world of possibilities, one step at a time in the footsteps of his Saviour. Just three years later, Jesus led him and the other disciples to Jericho on their way to Jerusalem. There he met another tax collector, Zacchaeus, a man of higher rank but lower in stature. It must have felt like deja vu as Matthew heard Jesus invite himself to the tax collector's house. How Matthew must have smiled at the memories of his own change of direction. The Christian life is not a law to obey, but a way to take. It is not in following practices or even simply following teachings. We are called to follow Jesus. And he begins by coming with us to face the truth of our lives. Accepting us just as we are gently making himself at home amongst the detritus of our mistakes and regrets, then lifting us and loving us out into a bold new adventure.
Let us pray. God of new beginnings, begin a new work in me today. Raise my view up from everyday mundane routines and cause my heart to sing in harmony with yours. Open my eyes to new possibilities, new experiences, fresh discoveries of grace as I walk into the vast landscape of life with you. Help me to be aware of your guiding hand. Keep me close that I may follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Amen. If you could relate to somebody in that story of Matthew's calling, who might it be? I'm wondering how you would feel if you were Matthew, put yourself in his shoes. Regrets, disappointments, perhaps feeling that, you know, you can't really change your life. And then Jesus steps in and said, oh, well, actually, there's always hope for a new way. Perhaps you might be like Matthew and, and look at stuff that he's accrued in life and wondering, you know, what's it worth anyhow? Material things. And step out to a fresh new way of looking at life. Maybe you might align yourself perhaps more with one of Matthew's guests. 
somebody might have brought you along to church or or to some sort of group or look at something think come and have a look at this see what you think and you're a bit bewildered by what's going on but you can see there's something different you can see something good you can see some hope and wonder where you might fit in all of that i wonder what happened to the people <clears throat> who were guests of Matthew's that fateful evening. How many of them followed Jesus too? I wonder if perhaps your instincts might draw you to sympathise more with the disapproving neighbourhood. Who is Jesus mixing with them? Does Jesus do things that we disapprove of? Hmm? Do we have a narrow view of the sort of people who would be good Christians? Are we narrow-minded? Do we put people in boxes and think about you know, their past mistakes? Matthew was born into a good, solid Jewish family. He had a, a good name. But... He had gone well astray. And so there would have been a, a lot of disapproval and, and recriminations as well if Matthew had been mean to them in the course of his tax collecting. I wonder, when someone comes to Christ, do we tut-tut and hold their past life against them or do we open our arms with the same love and grace that Jesus has shown them. It's a challenge for us sometimes. We need to recognise the beginning of this Lent journey. As that African proverb said, a man who does not know where he is from may never know where he is going. So let's look at ourselves. As the psalm said, you have searched me and you know me. So let's hope this Lent is a, a voyage of discovery for us all. God bless.